Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we're going to be continuing with our SS7300 series PLC. We're going to be checking out the analog uh, outputs. So uh, there's a couple of analog outputs uh, we have on our original PLC. We're not going to be using a, an additional card for it because I just don't have it and there's particularly no need for it. So uh, the card we're using is uh, the PC, PLC we're using the CPU 313 and it's got two uh, analog outputs and then uh, most specifically we're going to be having a look at today to uh, how to uh, wire the analog output itself and uh, how to more or less get the voltage out of it via the program itself if we're going to be using the TI portal with some basic very basic move instruction to uh, uh, send the volts out so that's what pretty much what we're going to do in today and the reason we're doing analog outputs first because uh, we're going to be using the analog output at 10 volts later on in the video where we're going to be adding a potentiometer that we'll be able to send in a reference into our analog inputs so uh, pretty good start we can try to do this step by step so yes that's what we do today so Yes, all the related manuals and videos that I believe are going to be benefit you in any possible way is going to be in the description below. Guys, do check out the manual in the description where I leave all the uh, necessary information for what I do in here for you to read, but read up on it. It's specifically, specifically for a hardware wiring and things like that. There's a manual that uh, Siemens has done. I would say it's for all the all the cards but if you type in your card by uh, put in a search bar it will find and you'll be able it will find the card for you and you'll be able to be able to find all the necessary wiring what you need so yes that's what we're gonna do today so without further ado let's get started <music> okay so before we get started so we're gonna go through a little bit the kit that we're gonna be using we have our ABB drive in here and we are going to have these two cables are going back to our card. We're going to be using our PLC and we have switches down here to start up the uh, start up uh, the, well, the drive, which you already had written the program in the last video. So what we're going to do in here, we're going to send 10 volts uh, to the drive to operate the drive. That's pretty much what we're going to do for the analog uh, output itself. So having done that, so now we know what what tools you can use and we will we will get to the drives wiring as well I'll quickly show you as well how the drives uh, drives should be wired if you are using a same method as I am so uh, hopefully this is visible so there's a lead from actual uh, uh, actual uh, PLC in these two analog uh, channels that we will be talking about now they're actually integrated within this uh, PLC and the power uh, the, the power itself is receiving from actual PLC's input from here. So that's what powering this part of the card. So usually, the, if you would have a separate card, yeah, you would have a uh, line in a neutral would have to come from different, from separate power supply to power up the card. But in our case, we don't need to do that. So in here, for this particular PLC, you will usually, you, you will usually see things like that. So uh, hopefully in the future, if I do uh, get, get another, a separate analog output card, I'll definitely uh, be uh, showing that. So as you can see in here, we got the V standing for the terminal 16, A for, uh, for 17, then there's again V for 18, and A uh, for 19, and then we also have a mana 20. Mana 20 is our negative output. So that's the negative that we're gonna need to send to our drive. So, and, uh, and then you have to choose, there's a channel zero and there's a channel one. So, and then you have to choose between uh, which, which one you're going to be doing. In our case, we are going to be outputting volts. So that's pretty much, uh, uh, we're going to be, uh, which channel we're we using? We're going to be using channel one, not channel zero. So as you can see my 18 right there, is going to be outputting volts and I'm sending my uh, negative, which is my uh, mana in there, which has been sent to the drive as well. So, so yeah, that's pretty much it really. So uh, for actual output, it's quite straightforward. And when it comes to the drive, let me put that on without, without breaking it, hopefully. So let's close that off. So let's get, get to the drive itself. As you can see in here, I'll just quickly show you, if you are wiring it to the drive, drive usually, if you uh, usually will have 10 plus ground and then, then obviously the input for the analog itself. 
As you can see in here, we are using only two of them because, because the 10 volt source, which, you, which is right down here, which we usually would get for the potentiometer, we don't need that one. But we're gonna be playing in the next video uh, how we can uh, connect the potentiometer to actual PLC. So uh, we no longer need that. So all we need is the analog input the circuit common, which is gonna be our manner that's coming from the PLC and only the sending the 10 volts into this uh, analog input right in here, which is zero to 10 volts. That's quite straightforward. So you can see my terminal uh, two is gonna be my analog input and obviously I need to send in the grounding as well. So having done that, so uh, what we're gonna do now is jump on the TR portal and uh, get this baby boy running. Right, here we are. So this is a, a continuation from uh, the previous video. So what we need to do first is find out what channel it is. So uh, let's go into the actual configs and uh, let's zoom this bad boy in. Come on. Oh, I clicked it several times. Here we go. So uh, and then so here is our uh, PLC. So we're going to be our channels are right here. So uh, which is uh, QW752 and qw754 that's the one we're going to be using that's the one we need so uh what we're going to do we're just going to take it and we're going to drag it did i did i pick it up no i didn't here we go now here we go we put that in there and we're going to call that one a come on uh turn volt out so uh and another one because uh, because it is is a physical output so we need to send the send the actual data into it to output any volts so we're going to use basic move instruction again very basic stuff so you see, there's all sorts of difference you can do with it but just to give you a good gist of what we're doing in here so uh we're just going to use a move so for that we're going to need a memory word for it so we're going to say we're going to call this one voltage and we're going to change that to memory word so we can interact internally so uh and we're going to change the address to zero yes. again uh, which, whichever program you're using make sure that that memory word is not used so uh and there we go so uh, once we've done that so we're ready pretty much to program so let's go back into the main ob1 and go on to the circuit in here and uh, get did I click? Yeah, get get the move move instruction. This is literally just to a uh, for demonstration purposes how to really work with your analogs. So uh, the first one we're going to be obviously voltage, which is going to be our memory word. That's the one we can send into the actual output, the data, which is the range, which you're going to look at right in here. If you look at the voltage analog voltage representation of our output range for the analog output module. So this is basically for different module, but the principle is the same. As you can see, our nominal range is 27,648 is going to be full 10 volts. And obviously it shows you the uh, over range, under range, and so and all the differences here. As you can see, about 20,000 is going to be seven and a half volts and blah, blah, blah. So our, if you want 10 full 10 volts, we need 27,648. So another one, if you want to lead, because let's just go back onto the thingy, to interact, to be able to uh, interact with this analog output, we need to use thing called a peripheral addressing. And if you want to read up on it, I will leave this in a description below as well. Where and when do you need peripheral addressing? Quite a bit to read in here. So uh, read read about it, sort of explain explains uh, why and when and sort of what CPUs and things like that. Definitely read up on it. But uh, what all we need we need to know for this video. So when we are selecting the address, which we which is a QW754, we need to put the P in front of it. So we're going to call it rather than QW, we're going to say P Q W, and then 754 754, and that will come out as a 10 volt out. So uh, that's it. So this is pretty much ready to go. So do remember guys, if you, especially, especially with the S300 series PLC, uh, there's, thing, there's that thing, a thing called of peripheral addressing for the uh, analogs. So, uh, so yeah, so that's done. So once we've done that, so let's uh, pump that into our PLC. 
And what we're going to do, we're going to move things around in it in a minute. So let's get that one in there. So all it does now, because if you are in, in like in in a, in a program blocks, it only, it only updates the program blocks. So it takes quite quickly to a uh, send program in and out. It doesn't do all the device configuration, things like that. So uh, I haven't done that. So yeah, the one thing definitely, one thing I forgot to say, make sure when you are in your device configuration and you click on your card, make sure that your uh, output is set up to uh, if it in configuration is set up to uh, do the voltage as you can see my, my channel uh, output 0 I think by default output 0 and output 1 they both are in voltage so oh we are in 0 to 10 volts we, we need to change output 1 that's the one we're using let's change that to 0 to 10 so here we go I forgot that part so uh, so do make sure that it's set up exactly what you're trying to do so uh, that's what I'm trying to do. Obviously, I, I can go in minus. If I would send in like minus 20,000, it would have gone into minus, uh, minus, well, I don't know, uh, what that voltage, uh, 9 volts, something like that. It would have done that, but I don't need that for for the drive. I'm only working from 0 to 10. So uh, let me update that config as well. So we know, make sure that the uh, system is running exactly how we intended to do. So come on, let's start up. So that is on. So uh, next thing we're going to do, let's jump back to the main OB1. And uh, let's go live. Because I think I've been playing it already. It already is going to have some form of uh, data in there. Yeah, 5,000. So you can see 5,000. So uh, quickly to show you what's the best way to do it. Uh, we might have to uh, shift backwards forwards from the, uh, from the camera to the actual drive. So let me rearrange it. So we'll be back. Here we are, so hopefully you can see what I'm trying to do in there. Let's also put the meter in there, so you can see the drives, uh, drive screens. Hopefully that light is not too much in there, but that should be a uh, more or less uh, there, hopefully. So uh, I'll quickly put the meter on it, I hope that camera is fairly visible. So if I put the meter on it and measure it, the, measure the actual uh, voltage that's out, uh, coming out, that's only about one point eight volts and that equates to 8.8 hertz so uh so sort of give you an idea what, what is going on there so what we can do in here we are going to start up the drive so the drive at the moment is uh, running so and as you can see we just double if you if you're in uh if you're into the monitoring mode which is these, these little glasses in here monitoring on off so if you want to edit the values, you don't need to go and uh, right click and things like that. Just double click on actual what you're trying to edit. And it will open you this window where you can edit your modify your values. So uh, what we're going to do in here, we are going to uh, change that to 10,000. Again, this this is not being scaled or anything. This is just literally send. You can do any lot of other things with this data later on. It's just to get you going to see you under, uh, to understand what is what. So, uh, so at the moment we are running at 10,000 output and we are getting 3.6 volts. Sort of, hopefully you're already getting the gist. What is going on there? So what we're going to do in here, let's just go full. Uh, what's that range was? Let's copy that one. Oh, copy that one. Copy it and let's put it put that value in and that should give us full 50 hertz. So boom, boom, paste. And there we go, my motor is running at the full blast and let's have a look at what's coming out. So, uh, let's connect to it. Exactly 10 volts. Card works absolutely brilliant, spot on to the last uh, volt. So, and here we go, ladies and gentlemen, let me shut this off. That will do for this video. Hopefully, it gives you a good understanding how the analog output works for this particular uh, PLC itself, which is a CPU 313C. Obviously, there's analog output cards. Principle is very much the same. The only thing is in, in, uh, you will need to power the card itself, which, again, you can see in, in uh, I will leave in the in description a very good manual 
where you can find all the wiring for all the cards. Just type in your number by uh, Krill F in PDF. It comes up with the search bar, type it in, and you'll be able to find out exactly which card is written and all the information about the card, including its wiring. And that'll do, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully, you enjoyed the video and it helps you out. And uh, don't forget to like and like the video if you like what we're doing here. And uh, also, if you're new to the channel, just subscribe. Other than that, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.